previously on Science for All. One troubling consequence of the fact that the ground is accelerating upwards is that because the Earth is round, it seems like it should imply that the Earth is expanding upwards. So how does gravity prevent the Earth from expanding? Or more generally, how does Einstein's gravity really work? Now the answer. So, Einstein's general relativity. You've probably heard that it has to do with the curving of space, as represented by many popular images like these ones. I think these images are really awesome, because they break our naive intuition of space-time. Also, let's face it, they are what makes general relativity so cool and appealing. And that's super important. But here on Science for All, I want to tell you what's really going on in Einstein's general relativity. After all, that's why it took me 14 introductory episodes to get to today. And so, I gotta say, images like these are actually deeply flawed and misleading. And today, in this episode, we're going to do some damage control and get to the core of one of the cornerstones of modern physics. Now I must say general relativity is no piece of cake and even the gist of it cannot be explained simply. So unfortunately today's episode will be unusually complicated even though I will only explain a rough approximation of Einstein's general relativity. But I promise if you followed a little bit of what has led us to today's episode, if you show patience and perseverance and if you pay great attention to what I'm about to say, it'll be totally worth it. Ancient theory is not just a bunch of facts with which you can make heartbreaking science fiction movies. It's also, and most importantly, I think, the most beautiful theory in all of physics. So I hope you're excited and motivated because you're about to learn some of the greatest insights you'll ever get to learn. First, it's useful to spend some time to understand what's so misleading about images like these. In this analogy, a rolling ball will follow the curvature of space. That sounds good. But why? Why in this analogy do we feel like the rolling ball will indeed follow the curvature of space? Well, first of all, it does not. The ball in this analogy does not follow a straight line in the curved space that is depicted. But moreover and more importantly, the reason why we feel like the ball will indeed follow the curvature of space is because we feel like the ball is being pulled downwards. So in this analogy, we are actually explaining gravity with gravity. That's a circular reasoning, and that's not good. In fact, the trouble with this analogy is that it depicts a curved space. But it's not space that's curved, it's space-time. This is the first crucial aspect of Einstein's theory. Space and time, especially in general relativity, are a single intertwined fabric. And it is this fabric, a four-dimensional fabric, that is curved. I know, that's rough. That's a lot to process. First, what's a four-dimensional space-time? Well, algebraically, it's not very complicated. It just means that any point in space-time can be located with four coordinates three for space and one for time. And that's not so surprising. If you want to arrange a meeting with someone, you have to precise both the three coordinates of space and the one coordinate of time. So that at some point in the future, your trajectory through space-time will meet. But granted, a four-dimensional space-time is something that gives headaches. It's just impossible to visualize. I struggle with it, and I'm pretty sure that professional physicists struggle with it as well. So, whenever you're lost, you can use the analogy of a two-dimensional space-time, but it has to remain space-time, which means that one direction must represent time. Now, Einstein's general relativity is a theory of gravity, which means that we're going to have to remove all non-gravitational forces. And since gravity is not a force, there's really no force in Einstein's general relativity. It's just a theory of inertial motions, and such motions are straight lines in space-time. And by the way, time flies, so we're always moving in space-time. We cannot remain at a single point in space-time. We are always moving, and hence having a trajectory 
through space-time. Okay, so all objects in space-time have trajectories and these trajectories in general relativity are always straight lines. But if space-time is curved, what does that mean? Now this is a crucial and difficult question which I have already answered in previous videos. If you're not sure about the answer, please check this video. Now, the idea of moving straight in space-time is so important that I'm still going to give another illustration right now. Imagine we were flying straight in a plane on Earth and we looked at another plane. Close by, the other plane will seem to be flying straight. But in fact, because the geometry of the Earth, which is the geometry of the sphere, is positively curved, over distance, the other plane will seem to be curving its trajectory towards us, even though it's actually flying straight. Similarly, the same sort of thing happens for the Earth around the Sun. The huge mass of the Sun will be curving space-time positively, so that compared to the straight space-time trajectory of the Sun, the straight space-time trajectory of the Earth will seem to curve inwards. And that's why the Earth remains close to the Sun, just like on a spherical geometry, the positive curvature of the surface curves the trajectory of the two airplanes so that they tend to remain close to one another. So to recapitulate, the Earth turns around the Sun because the Sun curves space-time positively around it and the straight lines in a positive curve space-time tend to curve towards one another. Matter tells space-time how to curve and space-time tells matter how to move. Got it? No? Okay, let's try to think about this a little bit differently. In a previous episode, I told you that in a negatively curved space, the space one mile away from us was somehow much bigger than it would be in a flat space. Conversely, in a positively curved space-time, the space one year away from me is much smaller than what I would expect in a flat space-time. In particular, the space that the Earth is included in will be much smaller in the future than what we would expect in a flat space-time. In an approximate sense, the Earth does expand, but the space that it expands into gets contracted by the positive curvature of space-time. And that's how gravity holds objects together. Unfortunately, the actual mathematics of this curvature is rather abstract and complex. This is because the curvature may differ from one point in space-time to another, and from one direction in space-time to another. All of this cannot be captured with a single number. Instead, the curvature of space-time has to be described by a so-called tensor, like the Einstein tensor. And Einstein's genius was to relate mathematically this Einstein tensor to the energy and matter flow in the universe. Similarly to curvature, this energy and matter flow through space-time is described by a tensor called the stress-energy tensor. By relating the energy tensor to the stress-energy tensor, Einstein was effectively describing how matter tells space-time how to curve. This equation, called the Einstein's field equation, is undeniably one of the most beautiful equations in the history of physics. It captures in a single elegant line Einstein's insightful new picture of reality, a picture somehow more subtle than the rest of us could have ever envisioned, but a picture that at last would finally provide a natural and complete explanation for the falling of the apple. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. It was definitely much more complicated than usual and it's perfectly normal if you haven't understood most of it. It took me years to understand even the basics of Einstein's general relativity and you cannot expect me to deliver it to you in just 10 minutes. But I strongly encourage you to watch this episode over and over as well as previous videos. And as well, please, please, please go and watch the PBS FaceTime videos on general relativity. Gabe has a wonderful way of explaining Einstein's theory and he gives illustrations which in the end are actually quite different from the one I gave in these videos. So hopefully by combining his explanations and mine, you can 
cook up your own understanding of how gravity really works. Next time I promise the video will be much simpler as we'll discuss how Einstein's theory of general relativity came to be proved experimentally. How did the scientific community get to believe in Einstein? What are the proofs of Einstein's general relativity? So what are the proofs of Einstein's general relativity? This is what I want you to think about for next time. Please, 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 if you've enjoyed this video and if you think that others will enjoy it, please, please share this video. It's very important for the future of this channel. Give it as well a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that I find the motivation to carry on these videos. I've also put two links. Uh, the first link is a link to my Science 4 article on the space-time of general relativity. And the second link is the PBS space-time video which I recommend it really, really one of the greatest video out there and definitely the best one video on YouTube that explains general relativity. And I hope I see you next time.